This video will demonstrate how to use Jamulus for your podcast remote interview software. Jamulus runs off an ASIO driver, so you, your sound card needs to have an ASIO sound card with uh, ASIO support, or you can use ASIO for all. On Macintosh, it will work with Core Audio, so that's not a problem. I've set up three remote guests as an experiment here to demonstrate this. We have a Macintosh, and they're all using Jack Router, no matter what the operating system is. So here's a Macintosh, and on the left side we have uh, Mix going into the Jamulus input, and there's the VU meter for Jamulus. So he's sending his audio, which is from Mix, to the Jamulus server that I have here across the room. I'm the podcast host on a Windows 10 machine. Guest 1 was the Macintosh. Here's Guest 2. Guest 2 is running Windows XP, actually. And also Jack Router for Windows. And on his system, there's Sound Max for the line input. There's a front microphone. And he's using Mix as well to send audio to the input of Jamulus. And then it'll come to the server and back out to every person connected to the server. Right now there's four people hooked to the Jamula server that I have set up on a laptop across the room. And we have another guest. The guest three is using Linux. And it of course has Jack Router. And in this case guest three is using a MIDI keyboard to send audio from QSynth through a reverb plug-in to the input of Jamulus, as well as desktop audio output from Pulse Audio going to the input of Jamulus. So let's take a look at, every, uh, listen to every guest. Here's guest one. We are wrapping up 2015. This is it. This is the end of the year. Um, Here's guest two. Spent some time visiting with, uh, with Michael right now. And, uh, but and guest three is using uh, audio, a stereo high-quality audio. So I just wanted to demonstrate the audio quality of using stereo. Jamulus has very good quality. It uses the Opus codec. And inside the settings here, you have several options. I'm running at high audio quality. You could also run at normal or low. You could also run at mono, or mono in and stereo out. Right now, with everything as high as it can be, as far as the quality and the bandwidth, the audio stream rate, from the from the Windows 10 podcast host is about 600 or so. So you need a little bit of upload speed if you're going to set up your own server. So if, depending on how many guests you have, uh, one to two megs should probably do just fine for one guest. And I have five available here, so I can run uh, a few more than that. And then I think if I looked at my bandwidth meter, it was around 600k. Uh, is going out right now to the Macintosh. So you can multiply that times two more, and that would be the bandwidth. So it would probably be still less than two megs with three guests calling in. If your server is in your house, because you'll be using a local LAN or your building, you'll be using your local LAN for you and the server. And that'll spare some of the upload that you might need just for the guests that are calling in. So let's go over to Jack Router here a bit, and we'll show you the setup. On the left side, on, as the podcast host, I'm going to send audio to Jamulus to these inputs here. And I'm using a VST host called Pedalboard 2 so that I can use microphone, line input, and desktop audio from a virtual audio cable created by Synchronous Audio Router. And that will be in the show notes if you want more information on how to do that. You can create as many virtual audio cables as you want. It's a free and open source program. 
You can record them for output, audio output, or audio input. So you see on the right I have the screencast receiving audio as a virtual audio cable that was created by Synchronous Audio Router. We also have Audacity doing the same thing. And of course all the audio is going to my speakers as well. Anyway, from the VST host we go to the input of Jamulus and there will be no feedback from guests coming into my Jamulus and then going back out to them again since my output of Jamulus does not go back to the input of Jamulus so you don't want to do that of course as long as your each of your guests is using a headset and not speakers if they're using speakers their output of the speakers will usually uh, come back and create feedback into their own mics and Jamulus does not have a feedback preventer uh, application or echo cancellation and that bogs down the CPU a little bit anyway probably so it's best that you use the headsets anyway and prevent that. So each guest is using a headset and their earphones are not loud enough that the mic can hear it but the mic enough is close enough to their voice that you don't have to have the mic sensitivity way up so that you would also pick up room noise or ambient noise. So for the input of Jamulus I have the microphone, the line input, we have desktop audio. Let's uh, play desktop audio. The you guys at aren't sign. Dating yourselves or anything. Yeah, no, no. Well, somebody's got to date us. <laughs> Carbon um, date us. <laughs> the at sign is called the Appenstatje in Dutch for monkey's tail. Mm -hmm. In Danish, it's the elephant's trunk or schnabel. So we have any browser audio as the podcast host that you wanted to send out for discussion or just to, to share with your guests. And I'm doing that through this virtual audio cable into the VST host, out the VST host to the input of Jamulus. And we have line input as well. And I have in the line input of my computer sound card, I have another external source coming from a cable TV. The most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. And of course, that's as a news channel with a commercial. Anyway, this could be a tape recorder, could be a CD player. Any external audio from the line input would, would be controlled right here. We have a VST plug-in right in front of it called LoudMax. This is an AGC circuit, so it keeps the volume the same. Whether it goes low or high, it'll maintain a minus 12 dB output the way I have it set here. On the microphone, I have a gate set up to uh, decrease the background noise. There's not much at the moment, but sometimes you know you have compressors and outside noises and lawnmowers and stuff going on. So unless you have a whisper quiet studio that's really protected, so this is a very helpful technique. And I'm, I'm very uh, low tech here. I'm using just all free software and a very, uh, very inexpensive headset and microphone. And these VST plugins are very helpful to get the most out of it. So there's a lot of room, uh, there's a lot of room for growth here, but I wanted to try to do it this way just for, just to see how well it would do. There's my AGC for my microphone. The max it will put out is minus four, and it's it's built like a compressor, so it'll it'll increase if I talk a little bit low, and I'm talking low now. So, and I'm going to talk a little bit high. So as you can see, that the uh, microphone doesn't move that much past minus four. And even if I talk softly, it still picks it up and gets it close to minus four. So that's a, I find this a very useful to be a very useful plug-in. We also have slight EQ and it is a drop-off on the highs so that I can get rid of some of the noise on this microphone and the computer sound card itself because I'm using the computer's own microphone input which is not good practice I know. Uh, but again just for demonstrating the ability of these plugins to at least make it workable where it's not really bad audio. Here's what it sounds like without it and just a little more trouble coming in and you, you may not hear as much of the uh, upper frequencies that as you might see on a spectrum analyzer but now it's back in. On this here's where the desktop audio comes in and it's using another AGC circuit so when Leo Laporte was speaking it, he was controlled to be a maximum of minus 12 or so dB. 
I have an open channel at 7 and 8 just in case to demonstrate that if I want to take the output of Jamulus I could route it through the VST host first and apply any plugins to it and then I could take a separate output at 3 and 4 and send it to the speakers screencast recording and the audacity input now to set up a server you want to set up your own private server to make this possible you need to know your external IP address or you need to have set up a dynamic DNS address like you could get from no IP there'll be information in the show notes I'm using no IP myself so you just give your guests that login server name which would be your DNS name and that will redirect them to whatever your current external IP address is then you need to port forward to 22124 to the computer where your server resides your Jamula server resides and the server is very easy to set up itself basically you just double click this is the chat program so everybody can chat with each other but let me move this out of the way there's the icon for Windows so they just double click there now it's running then you go into your router software and that will be explained on that web page there how to get that port forwarded to that computer then when someone comes into that port with the Jamulus server name that you gave them or your IP address if you want to do it that way it'll work too you don't have to tell them any port numbers if you use this one if you use another port number you'll have to add to that port as it says down here so take a look at that web page and set up your own server it's really easy it goes pretty smooth there aren't a lot of settings to worry about even gives you a web page here portforward.com so you can look up your own router on how to do that it's a good experience here's the Jamulus web page itself and it directs you to download it at SourceForge and the current uh, Jamulus is 3.4.1 and this is for every operating system Mac, Linux, or Windows I have a test tone here I wanted to show you and it's from EHOCW that helps to set up audio I also have an external control that I can use through a serial port adapter a USB to serial port adapter just uh, closing the DTR pin with a DSR pin and that will key Jamulus like this to create a side tone this is a Morris code software but it works really well for this purpose to help you set up audio levels Again, for any ASIO aware device, ASIO aware program, go into Find the ASIO Drivers and select Jack Router. That will allow this program to show up in your Jack Audio Connection Bay. And then you just can draw wires to and from wherever you want them to, want them to go. Music B is another program with ASIO support, and it has the Jack Router selected as its ASIO device, its audio playback device. It shows up in Jack Router. Even McLaughlin, he was shaking his head. How's it going to work? Just like that. So we have uh, audio coming from Music B to the input of Jamulus and also to the speakers, screencast recording, and Audacity input. So let's show you how to record this now. So I have every bit of audio I want to go to the input of Jamulus coming from either ASIO aware applications or there are a few actual Jack Audio aware applications for Windows as well. They'll show up right in here in this connection bay. You can wire them up to the input of Jamulus. So I have my microphone line inputs and the desktop audio to the input of Jamulus, the Music B and the EHOCW going to the input of Jamulus as well as the recording Audacity if I wanted to play an audio file with Audacity it'll go to the input of Jamulus and everyone can hear it and comment about it if you wanted to uh, create a discussion based on an audio file. So let's do a little recording and I'll show you how that works. So it's already set up. You can see that my microphone is moving. I'll take it off of pause and we'll start recording just a little bit. Then I'll stop and we'll take each guest. There's a lot to talk about. We have a really great show today. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff.
studio after a while. So we, uh, John Frusciante and I would go months sitting in the studio by ourselves trying to work this whole record out. And now we'll stop it and do a little normalization real quick. And now we can play it back. Pause and we'll start recording just a little bit. Then I'll stop and we'll take each guest. There's a lot to talk about. We have a really great show today. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. Studio after a while. So we, uh, John Frusciante and I would go months sitting in the studio by ourselves trying to work this whole record out. And so now you've recorded your podcast. We're using Audacity, another free and open source. You can edit inside Audacity if you like, but if you get the audio set up properly uh, with your guests before you know the actual session begins, you can work out a lot of those details, get everybody up to speed, get the volumes just about right. If you wanted to, you could take the output of everybody here from guest one, two, and three, send it to a separate VST host channel, apply some VST plugin plugins for compression or EQ, and take the output here on a separate output and record that as well. You just draw the pins over to Audacity input. And that's the basic setup for this using Jack Router, Synchronous Audio Router, ASIO Aware Applications, Jamulus. Uh, we have the chat in Jamulus here again. Three guests using Mac Macintosh, Windows, and Linux. So it, it's a very a well designed application and it's cross platform and it works fairly easy right out of the box. So I'll give it a try, see what you think. Thanks for watching.